hope you guys are doing great this week. We're kind of at the halfway point just about in this online Bible study and really excited to hear from Jeannie Cunyon, our author of Mom Set Free, once again. And you guys, today we're going to talk about the freedom from creating a thriving faith. And so back with us again is Jeannie Cunyon. How are you doing, Jeannie? I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be with you all today. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. And um, we're excited to hear your message today. All right. So let's dive in. We're going to talk about freedom from creating a thriving faith, like Melissa said. And I don't know about you, but um, this is a big one for me. Uh, When I find myself trying to control the outcome of my effort in my kids' lives, I refer to this as white-knuckled parenting. And I'm even doing it now. I can see my my fists are clenched around the thing that I want to be able to fix or control or determined. And I wonder if an area of white knuckled parenting is even coming to mind for you now. I'll tell you an area in which I tend to parent the most white knuckled is around what we're talking about today. It's around my children's faith as well as the fruit of their faith. I have found this is an area in which so many Christian parents feel the most pressure because we so desperately want our children to know and love Jesus. And we want them to live Christ-like lives. We want them to enjoy the fruit of their salvation. And this is a good and right thing to desire. That is our heart's cry that they wouldn't miss out on a relationship with Jesus and that their lives would bear witness to him and, and bring him glory. But it's when we actually start thinking we have the ability to create a saving and vibrant faith in our children's lives, or we start thinking we have the ability to produce Christ-like character in our children's lives, and we get in trouble. And the key words in those sentences are create, right? Creating the faith or producing the fruit. That's when we get in trouble because ultimately what this means is we've bought into the falsehood that we have the power to control and transform our children's hearts. Now, there's good reason that so much emphasis is put on focusing on our children's hearts and our parenting, right? Proverbs 4.23 and and Luke 6.45 testify to why this is important. The heart is the center of our child's spirit and everything we do and say flows from our heart. So we should be focusing on our children's hearts as parents, But here's the thing we have to remember when we do focus on their heart. There is only one who can transform it. There is only one who can transform their heart. And it isn't me and it isn't you. It is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Because we can shepherd our children's hearts, but we are powerless to transform them. See, I'll admit, at first, I saw this as very bad news. I didn't like this. I don't, I don't like feeling powerless over their hearts. I mean, if we're going to be really honest, I'll tell you, I want to get inside their hearts and I, I want to do some prioritizing and I want to do some mm. fruit producing, right? I want to be right. able to do that. Uh, I want to believe that if I just put the right stuff in, the right stuff will come out. But it was only a matter of time that I, before I realized that I cannot manufacture faith or virtues in their lives any more than I can manufacture faith or virtue in my own life, right? That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So rather, loving God and living in the likeness of Christ will be the manifestation of God's grace in their hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. So to encourage us, I just want us to read a few verses today. We're going to unpack a few verses quickly that speak to this and encourage us and welcome us to unclench those white knuckled fists and trust God with the children he's entrusted to us. The first one is in John 6, 44. Jesus says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. And then Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. See, we can and must faithfully share the gospel in word and deed with our kids, but the father is the one who draws our children to his heart. We cannot push and plead them there. And oh man, am I guilty of that trying to push and plead them there? I know a little bit about that. 
but rather we remember that he pursues them and he woos them to himself. And the Holy Spirit will open the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So yes, we can give them the gospel and we can lead them with grace, but it is God by the power of the Holy Spirit who opens their hearts to receive it. And now I want us to look at two passages real quickly that talk about the fruit of their salvation, that that fruit that we so long and desire to see manifested in our kids' lives. And the first is Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 7. He writes, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes things grow. And then in Galatians 5, through 23, the well-known passage on the fruit of the Spirit. But listen, lean in, okay? The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Remember earlier, we said we, we want to be able to produce and prioritize. Mm-hmm. But Paul's so clear here. The Holy Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit. He produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So yes, we can partner with God by planting seeds of faith. But friend, we cannot produce the fruit. It is the Holy Spirit who produces the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. And this is only bad news if we believe the lie that we care more about our children coming to accept the love of God and Jesus more than he does. This is only bad news if we believe we can do a better job at producing fruit in our kids' lives than he can. See, these beautiful truths, they invite us to unclench our fists and parent open-handed to God's plans. It inclines us to surrender our children's faith and the fruit of their faith into the hands of their all-powerful and all-loving God. We are free to trust him with the kids he's entrusted to us. Wow. Jeannie, I'm going to be honest. This one is a struggle for me. Mm-hmm. It's and a struggle for me too. <laughs> because we can't push and plead them there. Like you said, there's so many things that we can do. We can plant the seeds and and all of that. But then hearing that it's only God who makes things grow. I want to say, then God, would you do it a little bit faster? Because Amen. my child has walked away. And I so desperately want him to come back. And if I can't push and plead him there, how do I trust you without being scared? It's not going to turn out okay. How do I trust you? Do you know what I mean? What would you say to that mom? I do know what you mean. And even I have a son who's, you know, having a lot of doubt about his faith. A child who was um, loved reading his Bible and was so... um, seeking the Lord and has, is now having a lot of questions and mm-hmm. a lot of doubt and, and a lot of um, unanswered questions. And man, do I want to push and plead him there. Right. I want to be able to convince him that Jesus is better than everything, mm-hmm. right? I want him, man, I want him to know the love of God and to, and to trust it. And the God reminds me, pray, you can't push, right. you can't plead, yes. but you can pray, right. you can pray. And you can keep planting those seeds, Jeannie. You can love him unconditionally and you can keep, we we have to plant the seeds, right? Um, right. Worshiping, if, if they're still in the home, right? We're, we're reading God's word together. We're worshiping together. We're memorizing scripture together. We're praying together. We're planting the seeds. Mm. And then we pray right. because we cannot push. And sometimes the pushing and the pleading really works against us, right? Because they, they push back. Right. Um, and we need to give yes. them, we need to, Man, it's so hard, Melissa. These are, I love that we're having honest conversations about how hard it can be because we want to be able to convince them that Jesus is better than anything, right? And we can't, right? right. But we can, we can let them see it in us. They can let, we can let them witness in us why Jesus is better than everything. And then we can, we can just keep praying and reminding ourselves that. You know, God is, he is, he longs for them to know his love even more than we do. Right. And it's a lot of times it's just not going to make a right. bit of sense. Right. That's right. Yeah. I think that's why it's so important that we're here together to, to hear that from each other. It just gives me hope to hear that someone else understands this struggle too. Um, yeah. I mean, I know God knows I'm not alone because I have him, but it's also good to know that there's others moms who get it too. And to get that encouragement from each other. 
Um, and that it's also okay, mamas, this is one thing God has taught me. It's okay to enjoy your child, even if they're not making the choices that you wish they would make. Mm-hmm. It's okay That's to good. still love them and have that relationship with them um, and enjoy them in your lives. Um, of course, you have to do your work as a mom with guiding your child and, you know, helping them see the way, especially if they're still living with you. But, um, but I just think that's important. And, um, I want to be a mom who cannot keep my fist so tight and my heart so stressed out, but to be open handed to God's plans, because honestly, I'm closer to God than ever before. And part of that is because of having to trust him with my child. Mm -hmm. So thank you again for another great message. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. It was so great to have you with us. We'll be back again next week. Week five is where we'll be. We're going to be um, hearing about getting the freedom to, freedom to trust God when our children suffer. So we really look forward to that, to more truth shared by Jeannie Cunyon from God's Word. Thanks, Jeannie, for being with us. No, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, everybody. And remember, keep knowing the truth and living that truth because it does indeed change everything.